Orange juice. What's up everyone, it's OJ and we've got a new legendary card. It's the Fisherman. It's a four elixir legendary card. Yes, you know what that means? That means a new unique mechanic because it's a legendary. He does 190 damage with a 1.5 second hit speed, which works out to be 126 damage per second. He has 800 hit points and only targets ground units. That's important to note. He's both ranged and melee, having a ranged hook of six tiles. Armed with a hook and a fish, he'll reel units towards him. Anything he hooks is slowed by 35% for 2.5 seconds. Wait, that's two legendary mechanics. Left alone, he'll deal about 800 damage to your prince's tower. This is not something you ignore. You've got to address him, even if just skeletons to distract him. Despite the fact that he looks like he's as small as a musketeer, he's actually pretty big. Think like Prince and Dark Prince. He does not get knocked back by a bowler. The fisherman doesn't have very much health, so he isn't really tanky and he doesn't do too much damage. So what makes him so great? He can pull units towards him. He can fully utilize this mechanic by pulling enemies towards the center of your side of the arena. So both towers can help defend. And if the king tower is activated, all three king towers help defend with this hook mechanic. Activating a king tower is much easier, especially for building targeting units. They just go straight to the king tower. This is a juicy interaction. You can activate the king tower with a lot of units like the hog. In order to successfully reel in units to activate your king tower, you'll want to plant the fisherman one tile in front of your king on the opposite lane. This way his body isn't in the way and the hook target will be close enough to pull units to the king tower. Once the king tower is activated, you'll want to plant the fisherman perfectly before the hog is just about to swing. This will completely stop a lone hog rider. The timing is a bit difficult because his real charge time is a bit long and takes a bit of getting used to, but once you master it, his hook time is dependent on how far his prey is. Timing and placement is key. You can completely stop a hog rider from touching your prince's tower without even activating your king tower as well. He'll hook the hog rider, smack him, and then hook him one last time. Be very careful of the timing. If you hook him right before the hog swings, this cancels his swing animation, forces him to stutter, and allows your fisherman to get two hits on the hog rider. This may seem like a perfect timing, but because he got a chance to hit him the second time and chase the hog rider, he did not hook the hog rider a second time. You can actually activate your king tower against an enemy bowler. You must plant the fisherman precisely on this tile. This is the perfect angle to activate the king tower. This is especially useful against graveyard decks with bowler. Or with the power of geometry. Use the fisherman to pull the bowler to activate the king tower right into the center. You can do this with execution or two. It's just enough to activate the king tower and they've still got to deal with your fisherman after. The magic archer is a bit more difficult to pull off. He's too weak and will die if you plant the fisherman a little too late. What you have to do is plant your fisherman slightly earlier, right before the magic archer crosses the bridge so he hooks him a bit earlier. He'll activate the king tower right before he dies. Timing is key. You can use the fisherman to pull units like kite your P.E.K.K.A and reel in other units towards your death ball. If you're using him to defend Mortar, use him to bait out the first shot. He'll reel himself away from safety, but again, timing is key. He does one-shot goblins, so defending the goblin barrel will only result in two stabs. That's not too bad. Make sure to defend the outside goblins first, because the princess takes care of the inside goblin first. You can reel in giants to your king tower for no damage to your princess tower, but you have to master the timing of the fisherman. You'll want to time it so that he'll hook them right before they're about to strike an attack. This will work on all the big boys, except the Mega Knight because of his jump, and the roll giant is just really long due to his range. If you plant a giant right in the center of the bridge, the fisherman will not be able to reel in the giant to switch lanes, but if the giant is planted from the back, it crosses the river one tile closer to the center. That is all you need to make the giant switch lanes. This is a huge interaction difference. You completely change the giant's position, leaving all the support units without a tank in front of it. This will also work with giant skeleton, golems, and even the royal giant. This could completely break your opponent's push by separating their big tank from their support. This is especially helpful when one of your prince's towers is really low and your other prince's tower can afford a bit more damage to lane switch that golem. 
But don't worry, giant golem, royal giant users, if you know your opponent is going to try to force the lane switch on you, you can prevent this by dropping units down to distract the fisherman so he reels in the wrong fish. <laughs> so, you know how if your opponent plays a bandit, and then you plant the bandit after? The bandit that was planted last is going to be the winner. It is going to be the bandit that survives that dash damage with enough health to dash just once on the tower. That's a ridiculous interaction. So, fisherman versus fisherman is a different case. It's reversed. The first player to plant the fisherman will have the advantage of pulling the other fisherman in. The fisherman's greatest weakness will be swarmy cards. He takes way too long to swing his hook and just gets overwhelmed when he gets surrounded. He's designed to pull single units to the center to get help from both towers. With the help of both of the towers, he can even stop charging units like the prince without taking any damage. Among all the other interactions, he can stop a bandit mid-dash, which is unusual for most interactions, as she usually is immune to zap or the log during a dash, but not this hook mechanic. But if you hook slightly too early, she's still gonna dash onto him. So the fisherman can completely stop a prince's charge, it can completely stop a bandit's dash, but it cannot stop a sparky's charge attack. When he lands his hook, it resets the Ram Rider's charge. When timed perfectly, it will completely stop her from dealing any damage to the Prince's Tower. On the counterattack, he can pull units towards your Ball of Doom. But keep in mind, he will die to big spells like Lightning or Rocket. He'll also die from the Fireball Log combination. However, he'll survive a full poison duration by itself, because he does have slightly more health than a wizard. Think of him as a beefier witch. The witch will die to poison and zap, but the fisherman will not die to poison and zap. He has slightly more health. This is where the log is slightly better, plus the fact that the log can knock stuff back, keeping them in the poison. It's a nice synergy to have. You can pull units away from your king tower at the last second to save yourself from the golem death damage or even the giant skeleton bomb. That's a very handy tip. You can also pull the miner off your tower directly and make it difficult for minor chip decks. b -rad, I know this sounds bad, but I know you're talented enough to outplay your opponents. The Electro Wizard completely wrecks the Fisherman. His zap resets his wheel charge right before his hook lands. Kind of like a perma stun. This reminds me of when the Electro Wizard reset the bowler when he was first released. The same goes for Zappies as well. Let's just say Zap is his weakness. <laughs> Literally. More on that a bit later. You can stop him with skeletons, just plant them in front of him so he doesn't hook. This will cause him to walk a few steps, giving the princess tower enough time to chip him out. Now that is a positive elixir trade. You can drop a Mega Knight on him mid-dash and take zero damage. The spawn damage in the princess takes care of him right away. Using tank killers like a mini P.E.K.K.A. or even the hunter will easily demolish the fisherman. An Ice Spirit planted close will cause him to get one hit on the Prince's Tower, which isn't a bad trade considering the elixir costs. Unlike the Bandit, once the Fisherman connects his hook and starts reeling in, he is not invulnerable. Spells and even units will still be able to deal damage to him. The log will still do damage mid-hook, but it won't knock him back. However, if you log him right before his hook lands on anything, it will be able to knock him back, but he'll still hook. Snowball is different though, it will knock him back, but if you knock him back right as he's about to land that initial hook, it'll knock him back, but it won't, it's, not, it's not gonna prevent him from connecting to the tower. However, if you manage to snowball him mid-hook, he'll have this delayed knockback effect where he refuses to be knocked back until after he reels himself towards the tower, then he gets knocked back and slowed. You can completely stop the fisherman from connecting using fireball. You have plenty of time to hit him, even when he's flying towards your tower. You can even freeze him mid-reel and completely stop him. It seems like a weird thing to do, but I mean, it's an equal elixir trade and it stops him one for one. If you zap him during his hook, but right before he's about to connect to the prince's tower, he is going to get perma-stunned. If you zap him mid-hook but not close enough to tower, it's going to stun him and reset his swing, and he's going to start swinging again for the second time to reel towards the tower. If you zap him early enough, he'll take damage but will not get stunned, therefore does not stop reeling himself towards the tower. Three different interactions with the zap, that's interesting. The only spell which isn't effective once he has hook on is the tornado. He will still reel towards the tower, but if you only have tornado, 
you can tornado him towards the king tower. He's quite heavy, so your tower will suffer two hits before being pulled. That's 380 damage, so think about that. So only do this if you have health for it. Any buildings will easily take care of the fisherman. He doesn't have enough health to take the prince's tower, and not enough DPS to destroy any buildings. His ability to switch lanes for big tanks makes a huge difference. With all that support, without a tank in front, they're all vulnerable to splash units and spells. Plus, he can pull things to the center to get help from the other prince's towers, which is amazing and helps against all single units, even defending against tanks. He's another card that can easily activate the king tower as well, so if two prince's towers weren't enough, try with a third tower. Graveyard got nerfed indirectly with addition of the Fisherman's ability to activate the King Tower. He's an additional card that can activate as easy as Tornado. He is incredibly useful in defense due to his inexpensive cost. He's like a single targeting Tornado that keeps on hooking until he dies. Once you use them on defense to defend against stuff like a Hog Rider or whatever building targeting units, you can let him cross the bridge alone and he's gonna deal 800 damage to the Prince's Tower. But nobody's gonna let him do that, so they're gonna be down even more elixir than that. Another scenario, depending on the deck that you're using or that you're facing after defending against the Hog, you can put a tank in front, Sparky in the back, and he'll hook anything into the Sparky. There are so, so many synergies. You can put a Dark Prince in front of him to protect him from his weakness of Swarmy cards, or you can put a Mini P.E.K.K.A down so it'll hook Musketeers towards the Mini P.E.K.K.A. The synergies are unlimited. This card and its new hook mechanic is relentless and will hook a Skeleton as fast as it can hook a Golem. Overall, he's not strong in terms of health or damage, but he is a game changer. Breaking your opponent's big pushes and activating the King Tower creates a very, good defense, and a good defense always wins the game. I can definitely see him in Pekka decks, bridge spam decks, and maybe even a Sparky deck. If the Fisherman becomes meta, more bait and air archetypes will rise due to the fact that he can't touch air. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more quality OJ.